From Washington, this is VOA News. Coming up, Iran gets slammed at the UN. Audiologues blame for the US government shutdown. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Norman. At the UN on Tuesday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Iran is continuing a vast and feverish effort to acquire nuclear arms and that his country is ready to stand alone in defending itself against Tehran's nuclear ambitions. He urged the international community not to let up pressure on Iran and called its leader, President Hassan Rouhani, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish I could believe Rouhani, but I don't. Because facts are stubborn things. And the facts are, that Iran's savage record flatly contradicts Wuhani's soothing rhetoric. Iran has long insisted its nuclear program is peaceful, but Mr. Netanyahu said its efforts to acquire a nuclear arsenal have continued since Mr. Rouhani's election. International inspectors have arrived in Syria to begin the task of verifying and destroying President Bashar al-Assad's chemical weapons arsenal. Operations to rid Syria of chemical weapons by a target date of mid-2014 will be one of the largest and most dangerous of its kind. It is the shortest deadline that experts from the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons have ever faced in any nation, their first mission, and a country at war. Arsenals believed to include sarin, mustard gas, and other banned chemicals stored at an estimated 45 sites across the country. Here in the U.S., President Obama Tuesday criticized how some Republicans in Congress are trying to kill his signature health care program while also being responsible for shutting down much of the U.S. government's operations. Republicans in the House of Representatives refuse to fund the government unless we defunded or dismantled the Affordable Care Act. They've shut down the government over an ideological crusade to deny affordable health insurance to millions of Americans. In other words, they demanded ransom just for doing their job. Republican opponents of the Affordable Care Act, sometimes called Obamacare, say it's forces and people, including businesses, to buy expensive insurance policies against their will, hurting the economy. About 800,000 federal workers are now on furlough. Other federal workers are staying on the job with no guarantees that they will be paid. The shutdown will not be affecting the Voice of America broadcast. Pope Francis has opened a landmark meeting on reforming the Catholic Church. He's holding three days of consultations with eight cardinals he has appointed to advise him on revising the Vatican administration and worldwide church reforms. Vatican analyst and author Massimo Franco. I think that they'll not deal with the Curia reform. I think that this G8 or V8, as it is called, uh, it's a sort of uh, strategic cabinet to try to understand what the priorities are in the world for the church. It means to rebuild the international agenda of the Vatican, which has been blocked during the last years of Benedict XVI's papacy. Pope Francis said Tuesday the church must, in his words, restore hope to young people, help the old, be open to the future, and spread love. Residents of a town in western Burma say a Buddhist mob has gone on rampage against local Muslims, killing two people. Residents accuse the Burmese police and military personnel of standing by as hundreds of Buddhist rioters burned down more than 70 homes, leaving villagers of the common Muslim minority in a state of fear. 
Fugitive U.S. intelligence leaker Edward Snowden is among three candidates for the European Union's top human rights prize. Snowden was nominated for the Sakharov Prize by the European Parliament's Pro-Environment Greens Caucus, which said Snowden risked his freedom by disclosing U.S. government surveillance programs. Of the nominees of the awards program include Pakistani schoolgirl and education activist Malala Yousafzai, who survived a Taliban assassination attempt, and a group of three Belarusian political prisoners jailed for protesting the disputed re-election of President Alexander Lukashenko. Past recipients include Nelson Mandela and Aung San Suu Kyi. For more news, go to our website at voanews.com. I'm Steve Norman, VOA News.